Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and in today I'm going to be building our very first fantasy terrain piece and that is going to be a Warhammer style building. You can use this for D&D or for Warhammer, Warcry or whichever kind of fantasy games you guys prefer. Now the building of this is very very simple, very straightforward, very easy. The painting, however, it, I take a few steps, you can skip a lot of them if you prefer. Uh, this is the way I do it and uh, I kind of like this style of houses, yeah. And uh, I'm also working on a few other ones who are not finished, just letting you know in advance. This is one, all made with the same techniques. This is another one. And then I am also working on an inn type of building. I don't know, this is a rather big piece, so I don't know how well you guys can see it. So, yeah. But basically the steps of uh, this building are the same as the ones I used here. So, without further ado, I would suggest follow me to the crafting table and let's do this! Alright my friends, let's begin with our fantasy building. So we're gonna begin with uh, two squares that are 2 times 13 centimeters by 7.5 centimeters. You're gonna need two of those. And you're also going to need uh, two smaller pieces that are 8 centimeters wide and 7.5 centimeters long. And mark out uh, the middle part of the 8 centimeters on the smaller squares. So mark out the center. Now on the small, uh, draw a line where you marked out the middle that is 7.5 centimeters long and mark out 5 centimeters to each side on both of the small squares. Now we're going to cut these pieces out and this is where I fail my intelligence roll and cut straight through the roof part. But no worries, we'll glue it back together later. <laughs> now cut the four pieces out. Now for the door, we're gonna measure two centimeters from the left side we're gonna mark three centimeters in width and five centimeters in height and for the window we're gonna mark out two centimeters from the bottom and we're gonna make the window four centimeter wide and three centimeter high hope you're still following me <laughs> let's cut out the door and the window first if you my explanation is too complicated just follow along now here I'm taking a frisbee, but you can uh, either just take a simple plate and measure it from the top to the bottom and we're gonna draw this curved, this curved uh, line of the roof. I like this uh, to be aesthetically pleasing. It looks more like the Warhammer buildings. Now uh, we're gonna mark out the halfway point again, as we, as you see here, to measure up where we're gonna <laughs> glue our roof piece back together. Now, if you are smarter than me, then you didn't cut through this part. But if not, well then, <laughs> then you probably just uh, follow along as I did and you cut through it. Now we're gonna be making a stone foundation of the house, and I'm taking some piece of XPS foam and start by tearing off small chunks. You're gonna need a lot of those. Well, depending on how many buildings you're going to be creating. Now, once I'm made enough, I'm going to grind them together in my hand for texture. You could toss them in a can and uh, put some stones in there and shake it up, but uh, this works just as well. Now, once you've done, take them all back, put them in the, the container. Now, I'm going to take a piece of balsa wood beam that is one centimeter by one centimeter. And I'm going to measure this up with the side of our building and simply draw a line. Now I'm going to use my hobby saw. You could use a, a knife for this as well, but I prefer to use my hobby saw. It goes faster. Even if it is balsa wood, you still need to cut through it a little bit. And you're going to need four of those. Just measure them up next to each other. So you have four beams. Now we're going to bevel the edges that they don't look like square beams. And make them a little bit more natural. So just slice uh, the edges off, it's balsa wood, it goes really fast. Do that for all four beams. Now clean up this mess. <laughs> now I'm taking a wire brush, and uh, but use a better one than mine because I accidentally used the one with the soft uh, bristle, so this 
texture really doesn't show all that well, but if you have a stronger one, it will show much better. Just uh, start by carving in the wood grain. Now I'm gonna glue the four beams to the side of the building, as you see me do here. Just follow along. And I'm gonna glue the smaller piece against the building, and here I'm gonna glue another beam. Just make a nice box. Like this. Now I'm gonna glue the parts of the roof that I cut off back on top. Actually works in my favor, I can glue them on top of the wooden beams, so... But if you can avoid slicing through them, yeah, it will save you some time. Now I'm gonna mark out two centimeters from the bottom all around the building, and I'm also gonna draw with my blue marker where I want my uh, wooden beams to be. And I'm using tin coffee stirrers for that. Here I'm marking out uh, a few spaces, four and a half centimeters, where I want uh, my beams to be. And I'm taking my coffee stirrers and I'm going to use some PVA glue and attach them. Just some tacky glue, PVA glue. Works well, it glues and it dries really fast, so just with some clippers I'm cutting them to fit. So for the slanted parts, just mark out where you need to clip them and just clip them. Put on some PVA glue and stick them on. It's best that you do this before we glue on the stone foundation. Now for the stone foundation, I'm using hot glue and I'm doing small pieces at a time and I'm just ramming those uh, bricks that we cut out, tore off. I'm just shoving them and pressing them firmly into position. It will give that uh, really rough uh, stone natural look. And you'll see when it's finished. But you get the idea. I'm gonna add some more wooden beams, just some more extra details to my building. I know I'm speeding the this part up, but you get the idea. <laughs> Now for the door, I peel off a piece of paper of a foam board and I'm marking uh, one centimeter lines and I'm drawing in with my pen, scraping it with a wire brush first, but afterwards I decided to just simply scratch in the, the wood pattern with a pen and I'm gonna hot glue this, uh, white glue this to the side. Now I'm taking some mirror paper. I'm gonna make a window out of this making it a little bit bigger than uh, my window is supposed to be. And I, here I have this mosquito mesh. And I'm going to uh, attach it with some white glue. Now, put this thing aside till the very, very end. Now for the roof, cut out two pieces of cardstock that are 7 cm long and 9.5 cm wide. Just mark out uh, where you want the pieces to be. Now mark out one centimeter line at the top and draw a line in the middle and we're gonna make a curve. First mark out the middle and then we're gonna make a curve from the outer edge to the center like this. And we're simply going to take our scissors and uh, cut that away. And then use that one for uh, as a template for the second part as well. And use your scissors to cut away the tilted part as well. Like this. Now I'm going to hot glue the two parts onto the, onto the roof. Just slide them into position so they are centered. Now, I cut a XPS beam that is 1 cm wide and 19 cm long. And I'm also roughing it up to create some wood grain. I'm also slicing this uh, beam in the middle so I can slide it across my roof. And then simply hot glue it on top of the roof. 
like this. Just uh, put a little bit of extra hot glue on the corners edges and squeeze them together. Looks nice. Simple little building. Now for uh, our roof tiles, I'm cutting corrugated paper about one to one and a half centimeters long and I'm gonna start from the bottom and I'm gonna work my way up overlapping them as you see me do here once they are done just take your knife and uh, cut them to fit and pull away the, the glue strings I'm also gluing down on the inside of uh, the roof also glue to glue some uh, corrugated paper now I dry fit a piece of XPS foam for the chimney and I'm gonna cut that to length dry fit it a little bit I'm gonna draw in some brick lines very quick very easy and then I score it some more deeper and I'm gonna glue it on with my hot glue gun now I'm gonna create a plaster and I'm going to mix a thick paste of some uh, wood filler with some water just till you get a, a rather thick consistency and start by uh, putting it all over the plastered areas of the house could be that you need to uh, put down two coats depending on how strong or how textured you want your plaster to be I end up using two coats wipe with a damp cloth I'm gonna wipe it a little bit away from my wooden beams now for the window till I cut a piece of foam board to match and I'm gonna glue that inside of the window now when that is done I'm gonna spray paint everything full black and overbrush everything with a brown except for the stonework leave that black cover it all in brown I know what you're thinking this is my go-to for Necromunda painting no I'm not gonna make a rusted uh, medieval shed <laughs> no, no you'll see later now I take my plaster mix again and I'm gonna stipple it everywhere again where I want plaster to be you can paint it on as well it's better that you stipple it to get more texture now dry brush all the stonework and the wood parts with a gray then go over it again and dry brush with a lighter gray as you see me do here now I'm going over it with a lighter gray also the wooden beams don't be afraid just dry brush them gray now I'm gonna paint the chimney exit with, a, with some pure black and then overbrush the entire roof with a red paint or whatever color you want your roof to be I'm using red in this case to match my other fantasy buildings look at me go I'm so fast <laughs> now I'm gonna make a wash uh, wash a wash <laughs> I'm gonna make a wash that is 50 50 black and brown paint a bit of liquid medium and dish soap and some water cover the entire building with the wash or just use your go-to wash but do make sure that it is a brown one you'll see later because I want uh, the brown to be in the deepest recesses of the of the plaster now let's finish off the details once all is dry, I'm covering the plaster in a sepia wash. I'm using seraphim sepia from Citadel here. Just to cover the entire plaster part. And the brown will keep shining through. Now I'm gonna use uh, this Saigor brown contrast to go over my wooden beams, everything that is wood. I do thin it a little bit with water though. You can also use a, a thick brown paint, a dark brown paint for this if you prefer. But make sure that you well that it's a little translucent and leave it to dry now I'm gonna cut two small thin strips of cardstock three centimeters long and 0.4 centimeters wide for the door braces and also small triangles to glow on the sides as you will see me do here I glue these pieces on as I just mentioned and I'm gonna also painted them silver Afterwards, when they are glued on and dried, I'm also going over that with a simple black wash. Some Nolan oil will do just fine. 
just a little extra detail on the door as you see me fiddle with this thing here and this for the doorknob i simply cut off uh, a piece of a top piece of a coffee stirrer and glued a small tiny little bead on top of it this will be my doorknob slide it into position when everything is attached to it then uh and you still haven't painted it uh, silver, then just go over it with a silver paint, as I'm doing here. Now, with some Kislev flesh or any bone color, we're gonna start by putting down a heavy dry brush on the center of the plastered areas. Leave the edges the sepia color, just only down in the center, as you see me do here go around the entire house doing this and now we're gonna glue in our window I'm using white glue as well you can use hot glue it doesn't matter there we go nice now all that remains is a quick dry brush of all of all the stonework with some uh, light gray and with some white go over all the stones and when that is done, I'm gonna dry brush the roof with a, a lighter red and then highlight that with a dry brush of orange. And here we see the finished piece with some terrain on it. So I hope you like this. It's a very quick and easy way to uh, make uh, fantasy buildings. So thank you all very much for watching my very first fantasy uh, tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for all the support. I appreciate it very much. And yeah, I will do more videos in the future uh, regarding fantasy terrain and all other types of stuff. Fantasy related, of course, also Necromunda. So yeah, see you on the next run, guys. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.